not equipped with the new knowledge, new skills, new technology. So you need to spend a lot, lot of time to learn that. So it can be the cause. When it can be the cause, then you enroll your employees or train your employees to learn that technology. All right. If no, then you revise the standard. All right. When you revise the standard, the caution is it should be measurable and it should be measurable to actual performance. All right. And this happened. Ultimately, you are performing the second step of controlling. Compare your actual performance with the standard one. All right. So it's quite self explanatory. So, first of all, you need to ask question whether the standard is attainable. If yes, do nothing. If no, whether the lack of performance is acceptable or not. Acceptable, do nothing. If not acceptable, then think about that whether the goal we devise are realistic or not. If realistic, lay down the causes and correct the performance. That's it. And then measure it according to performance. But if not, then revise the standard. When you revise the standard, it is more measurable to actual one. And actual one, when you compare with the actual one, you find out whether you are on the track or not. Right, everyone? Let's move forward. Now, we're talking about, you know, comparing the actual performance, comparing with the standard performance. So what is performance? So performance is end result of the activity. And whether that activity is hours of intense practice before anything, like carrying out your job activities, all right? So performance is what results from the activity. And what do we mean by organizational performance? The accumulated results of all organizational work activities. So it means all work activities, it means it is a multi faceted concept or multi factor concept concept. So it means managers must understand what factor causes to increase the organizational performance. He must know all the factors or understand what are the factors. So if you measure the organizational performance, so you need to look two important concepts, productivity and effectiveness. What is productivity? It is, we talked about in our first lecture, the difference between efficiency and effectiveness. All right, efficiency is producing low, uh, sorry, producing, producing high from low inputs or producing or output is high from low inputs. What is effectiveness? All those, or those production are increasing the overall organizational performance or organizational goal. That's it. So, in measuring performance, we call this efficiency. Efficiency means organizational productivity, which is the amount of goods or services produced divided by inputs needed to generate that output. The difference between output divided by inputs. If the answer is high, it means you are producing from low inputs and converting those inputs into higher outputs. And effectiveness is a measure of how appropriate organizational goals and how well they are being met. So if you see an example here in the, in the book, so you will find out different kind of surveys and you can find out the rankings. So 
the fortune 500 rankings industry week 1000 world largest public companies according to co so they publish all those stuff in which they mention that okay this organization organizational productivity is higher their efficiency is higher or not and what are you know uh, they doing and how they are measuring it and they are also mentioning the consumer index at satisfaction as well which is normally maintained by uh, michigan business too right so there are different fortune 500 global 500 100 fastest growing companies 10 best companies to work so you can find out their practices to or you can make the standards of their practices to find out whether uh, we are meeting the the uh, industry standards or not or whether we can improve our productivity or not now employee performance how to control if employee is if this is the accept, acceptable range if he is performing above the acceptable range even then this is alarming even if he is performing below the range even then this is alarming if he is performing above the range maybe he has he is doing too much and it, it may be cost in future for healthcare benefits or maybe he wants to get the work done and just try to find an, an other job or experience absenteeism turnover he don't want to come or he only want to work for 10 days and don't want to come for 20 days so he's doing that so you need to find out that well why he is doing so much work above his expected work all right so you can call disciplinary action even though he is performing extraordinary but that is in unacceptable range maybe he's you know having too much pressure and too much pressure can cause cardiovascular diseases all right a workplace violence as well you you take disciplinary actions you remind him the work standards regulations and others then progressive disciplinary action which means an approach to ensure that minimum penalty appropriate to the offense is imposed because people they don't care about the warnings unless you gave them some penalty that is the human nature so once we something is coming out of our pocket we remember so that's why the government charges government make this traffic police and if you violate something you are forced to pay some kind of chalan or something tickets all right and it you feel quite disrespective or it's it's quite, quite you know it's very painful when you pay free your your hard earning to just compensate the wrong parking but next time you remember all right so that's it's the progressive disciplinary action so what kind of problems normally in the behavior of employees attendance on the job behavior dishonesty and outside activities so absenteeism tiredness abuse of sick sick leaves if you are given 20 sick leaves in a in a year even if you are good healthy but even then you are claiming at the end or at the peak of the work you are claiming your sick leave so how to control that you can take disciplinary action or you can ask him to verify to a doctor or give us the you know hard evidence that you went to the to that doctor or go to the hospital or something All right so on the job behavior insubordination failure to use safety devices alcohol drug abuse dishonesty like you are stealing something theft lying to supervisor falsifying information right outside activities like in the in the organization you are good you are producing 100 percent 
but outside of the organization you are involved in criminal activities selling drugs even that 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 is the problem why because reputation of the organization is at stake all right so that is also unacceptable now exercising control there are three kinds of control feed forward control concurrent control and feedback control so what is feed forward control that take place before a work activity is done in which you decide the controlling mechanism alongside the planning if you are actually producing this that would be our controls concurrent control while work is in progress control is taking place so what is feedback uh, feed forward control okay if you are working in a construction you need to wear <coughs> the yellow cap and the yellow safety stuff and the belt before you go to the production site feed forward control at the construction site when you are working on 10th floor you must wear the blue jacket or oh sorry the yellow jacket and the yellow cap right while working at the workplace all right what is feedback <coughs> if something bad happen and then you announce that okay because this incident happened it is compulsory for everyone to wear yellow cap and yellow yellow vest when you go to the work so that is reactive approach that is proactive approach feed forward is proactive feedback is <coughs> reactive and management by walking around what does it mean that is a term used to describe when manager is out in the work area he is interacting directly with the employees to talk about maintain the safety standards maintain all those stuff so that he can physically go and exercise the control <coughs> you have seen that whenever the boss is coming people start behaving differently they are starting to behave professionally they are starting to behave according to the standards why because they know that manager is on the way to find out or to exercise his control to find out the leakages and and then penalize or make some kind of punishment or fine those who are not following all those standards all right so basically the controls feed forward concurrent and feedback here we go so normally these are used as inputs because you are but using it with the planning and this is when you are actually on the work you are processing it so in output when things have done anything goes wrong or something then you apply that called feedback control which means problems occurred and then you resolve the problem right so all these are controls on employees all right is there any controls on finances yes so normally in finance you will talk about different kind of financial controls and these controls are normally you look at your financial your business financial statements you talk about liquidity leverage activity profitability 